how to finally overcome tinnitus and stopping the sound in your head. Introduction. I want to thank you and congratulate you for downloading the book, The Tinnitus Cure, How to Finally Overcome Tinnitus and Stopping the Sound in Your Head. You may think that you are going crazy. People don't understand what you are going through. You feel all alone. The pain doesn't seem to end and follows you wherever you go. These are just some of the thoughts that people living with tinnitus have had. Know that you are not alone. Close to one in seven people all around the world suffer from the condition known as tinnitus. It is more common than you know, but because of the many causes of the condition, it is also one that is widely misunderstood. This book contains proven steps and strategies on how to stop the sounds in your head caused by tinnitus. These steps can help you to take control of your life and stop living under the control of a condition that each and every one of us can overcome. In this book, I will tell you a story about a man in Britain who was on the verge of suicide because of the effects he felt from tinnitus. His doctors said that it was too dangerous to undergo surgery. This book tells you how this man was able to conquer his situation and find a cure for the debilitating symptoms he faced as a result of tinnitus. You will hear about experiences of other tinnitus sufferers to learn how tinnitus can be managed. It also provides your family and friends with steps they can take to better support you at this difficult time. Make the right choice and take control of your life. End the power that tinnitus has on your life. Make the change today so that you can manage the symptoms of tinnitus and become the master of your life again. Thanks again for downloading this book, I hope you enjoy it. This document is geared towards providing exact and reliable information in regards to the topic and issue covered. The publication is sold with the idea that the publisher is not required to render accounting, officially permitted, or otherwise, qualified services. If advice is necessary, legal or professional, a practiced individual in the profession should be ordered. From a declaration of principles which was accepted and approved equally by a committee of the American Bar Association and a committee of publishers and associations. In no way is it legal to reproduce, duplicate, or transmit any part of this document in either electronic means or in printed format. Recording of this publication is strictly prohibited and any storage of this document is not allowed unless with written permission from the publisher. All rights reserved. The information provided herein is stated to be truthful and consistent, in that any liability, in terms of inattention or otherwise, by any usage or abuse of any policies, processes, or directions contained within is the solitary and utter responsibility of the recipient reader. Under no circumstances will any legal responsibility or blame be held against the publisher for any reparation, damages, or monetary loss due to the information herein, either directly or indirectly. Respective authors own all copyrights not held by the publisher. The information herein is offered for informational purposes solely, and is universal as so. The presentation of the information is without contract or any type of guarantee assurance. The trademarks that are used are without any consent, and the publication of the trademark is without permission or backing by the trademark owner. All trademarks and brands within this book are for clarifying purposes only and are the owned by the owners themselves, not affiliated with this document. Chapter 1, What is Tinnitus? Can someone please kill that fly? The buzzing is so annoying. You turn to see the puzzled looks of your friends and family as you swat at the empty airspace surrounding your head. Then the little child at your feet pipes up I can't hear any buzzing, there's nothing there. In your mind, you wonder if you are going crazy, because even though no one else can hear the buzzing you know that you can hear buzzing. You are not alone, in fact, there are 50 million Americans that suffer from similar experiences. The buzzing or ringing in the ear when there is no external source for the sounds, is referred to as tinnitus. The term tinnitus is taken from the Latin word tinnitus which means ringing. While the term is in reference to a ringing sound, some people hear buzzing, whistling, roaring or humming. 
the noise differs from person to person as does the severity. Some may experience the sounds continuously while others do so intermittently. Many people who suffer from tinnitus find it similar to background noise that is mainly noticed at times of quiet, such as when you are trying to sleep. Because of this, insomnia is often a side effect of tinnitus. Other side effects that have been felt by tinnitus sufferers include, difficulty concentrating, interference with work and personal relationships as well as psychological distress. The effects each person feels are different and they depend on various factors such as volume, frequency and duration. These factors also contribute to the psychological and emotional effects a person can feel as a result of tinnitus. These psychological and emotional effects can affect a person's work and outlook on life as they may feel that tinnitus is taking over their lives. While tinnitus is quite common, sufferers may also feel left out, as not many people understand the condition and overlook a person's suffering. Tinnitus can also affect a person's social life, because the condition can cause patients to feel fatigued making them too tired to participate in social activities. Furthermore, because loud sounds such as music, laughter or loud talking can sometimes increase the effects of tinnitus, many find it is easier to stay away from social gatherings where they know loud noises will be present. Tinnitus can also be a challenge on personal relationships. Studies have found that relationships suffer as a result of lack of sexual drive, lack of understanding of the tinnitus condition and also because of the stress related to tinnitus. To many, a ringing in the ears sounds harmless and not worth mentioning, but it is clear that the effects of tinnitus go far and beyond what many will be able to comprehend having not personally felt the effects of the condition. Chapter 2, Tinnitus Causes Tinnitus is not a disease, it is a condition that is brought about by a fault in the hearing system. These faults could be brought about by a number of different causes. Loud noises, some prescription and non-prescription medicines, neurological damage, age-related hearing loss, earwax blockage, ear bone changes, chronic health conditions, injuries, ear problems, many ears disease, TMJ disorders. Acoustic neuroma, metabolic and psychiatric disorders are some of the causes that could result in tinnitus. Mayo Clinic states that a common cause of tinnitus is inner ear cell damage. Tiny delicate hairs in your inner ear move in relation to the pressure of sound waves. This triggers ear cells to release an electrical signal through a nerve from your ear, auditory nerve, to your brain. Your brain interprets these signals as sound. If the hairs inside your inner rear are bent or broken, they can leak random electrical impulses to your brain, causing tinnitus. Luckily, many of these mentioned causes are preventable. Two of the easy ways to prevent tinnitus are avoiding loud noises and being mindful of what prescription and non-prescription medicines you take. Exposure to loud noise is often a part of one's profession, however. In these cases, it is best to protect yourself by wearing headphones that reduce loud noises when working around lawnmowers, chainsaws and in industrial sites. Loud music from cars and through headphones as well as at concerts can also affect hearing and should, therefore, be done with caution. Medicines are meant to alleviate sickness and, in most cases, they do. However, we often forget the side effects that are linked to the use of certain medicines, whether prescription or non-prescription. It is important that we are vigilant in discussing whether or not tinnitus is a side effect with our doctors and pharmacists to ensure that we are not putting ourselves at risk unnecessarily. It has been found, in many cases, that once the patient ceases to take the medicine causing the tinnitus, so did the tinnitus but in some cases the tinnitus has continued. This is a risk that you and your doctor will have to discuss, when you use such medications. Chapter 3, Tinnitus Symptoms While the symptoms of tinnitus are usually sounds such as hissing, roaring, ringing or whooshing they are ordered into two categories, objective and subjective. 
the University of California San Francisco Medical Center described objective tinnitus as the form is audible to an observer either with a stethoscope or simply by listening in close proximity to the ear. Objective tinnitus accounts for less than 5% of overall tinnitus cases and is often associated with vascular or muscular disorders. The tinnitus is frequently described as pulsate, which means it is synchronous with the patient's heartbeat. The University of California San Francisco Medical Center described subjective tinnitus as audible only to the patient and is much more common, accounting for 95% of tinnitus cases. Subjective tinnitus is a symptom that is associated with practically every known ear disorder and is reported to be present in over 80% of individuals with sensori neural hearing loss, which is caused by nerve and slash ear hair cell damage. Other than the ringing in the ears and head, some patients have found that they felt more sensitive to everyday sounds, which is known as hyperacusis. This is where sounds from the television or radio that are at a normal volume to everyone else feel extremely loud for the person suffering from tinnitus. Tinnitus is also linked to a person's posture. The way that a person stands and, sometimes, the way they lie down can cause a different pressure in their nerves, muscles and blood veins. It is this change in pressure that can cause the tinnitus sounds. Most tinnitus sounds are high-pitched, and there are also low-frequency tones. Some may hear a song or tone repeatedly in their head which is referred to as musical hallucinations. Low-frequency tones and musical hallucinations together with pulsatile tinnitus are some of the less frequent forms of tinnitus. If you experience any of these symptoms it is best to go to the doctor for a correct diagnosis. Chapter 4 tinnitus diagnosis. If you are hearing sounds that no one else is hearing you may want to go see your doctor in order to determine whether or not you are suffering from tinnitus. Your doctor will most likely perform three tests, a hearing exam, a movement test and an imaging test. During the hearing exam, you will sit inside a booth wearing headphones, and the doctor will play various sounds on either side of your head. Through this exam, you will able to discover the frequency at which the tinnitus sounds are being heard. This is important as it helps you find the treatments that will help you the most, in the future. During the movement test you can expect your doctor to ask you to move your eyes, clench your jaw and even move your arms and legs to see if the condition worsens. An imaging test could be either an MRI or a CT scan. This will allow the doctor to see images of your head, brain and ears. These three tests will enable the doctor to conclude whether or not you have tinnitus, how your tinnitus came about and diagnose treatments whereby you will be able to manage your tinnitus successfully. A clicking sound can sometimes result from muscle contractions in or around the ear. Rushing and humming are indicative of a vascular, blood vessels, origin. Hearing a heartbeat could show that there is a possibility of a blood vessel problem such as high blood pressure, blockage, a tumor or an aneurysm. Stiff inner ear bones can cause you to hear low frequency sounds, while an earwax blockage or foreign body in the ear can cause you to hear a variety of sounds. What you hear, how you hear it and when you hear it can all assist your doctor in a diagnosis of the cause of uteritis so that treatment can be found. While many are able to find a cause for their tinnitus, there are others who will never know the cause of their ailments. In these cases, the doctor will most likely discuss various options for treatment. These options will assist in easing the effects of tinnitus so that you are able to live a happy and fulfilled life. Chapter 5, Tinnitus Treatment Sound therapy is a therapeutic self-help for sufferers of tinnitus. It relies on a especially developed classical music recording that people with tinnitus can listen to anywhere and at any time, allowing them to handle their tinnitus whenever it is suits them. The music stimulates and rehabilitates the ear to treat the root physical problems that are commonly seen in the brain and ear of people with tinnitus. Certain stimulants can make the symptoms associated with tinnitus worse. These stimulants include nicotine, alcohol and salt and avoiding them can ease the symptoms associated with tinnitus. 
A natural remedy that has assisted many with tinnitus is using zinc supplements. This is effective because many patients who suffer from tinnitus also have low levels of zinc. Other supplements that patients have used to decrease their symptoms of tinnitus include magnesium and B vitamins. Folic acid has also been used when the problem is associated with hearing loss. Another natural remedy that has been found useful against the symptoms of tinnitus is ginkgo bilboa. The ginkgo extract has been used to improve blood flow, which in turn reduces blood pressure, which can often be a cause of tinnitus. Biofeedback is another method of handling tinnitus. It is often used to ease pain, but because tinnitus is very much like pain, it would make sense that the technology used in biofeedback could also assist those suffering from tinnitus. Biofeedback uses a machine that gets hooked up to the patient's body and tells when the muscles are relaxed and the patient is feeling good. People typically use this feedback so that they can control their body when in pain. The feedback is, now, used to buy tinnitus patients to adjust how their bodies react to tinnitus effectively. They are training their bodies to react positively in order to reduce the symptoms associated with tinnitus. Cognitive therapy can help tinnitus sufferers to cope with symptoms such as concentration variations in sleep patterns and changes in relationships. Cognitive therapy is a type of psychotherapy that is used to treat emotional and psychological problems. Earwax can build up inside the ear canal. The removal of the earwax can unblock the ear canal and relieve, or even end, the effects of tinnitus. It has been found that certain medications and, sometimes, Certain mixtures of medications can result in tinnitus. Therefore, changing your medication can, sometimes, relieve the symptoms of tinnitus. If you believe that your medications may be a cause of your tinnitus, discuss this with your doctor. Oftentimes, your medication can be changed and this may put an end to your tinnitus. Noise suppression is another method that relies on sound in the treatment on tinnitus. This treatment uses other sounds to quash the irritating sounds, in this case the sounds associated with tinnitus. There are a variety of methods used in noise suppression. Below are some of the noise suppression methods used to manage the effects of tinnitus. White noise machines, these are machines that play natural sounds like those of ocean or rain. These are helpful in blocking out the noise resulting from tinnitus. People often use this therapy at night when trying to go to sleep, as this is the time of day where tinnitus strikes the hardest due to quiet surroundings. If you don't have a white noise machine at home, you can make your own white noise by turning on an air conditioner or a fan. Hearing aids, one of the symptoms associated with tinnitus is hearing loss. A hearing aid can be helpful in that situation. It can also assist in reducing the symptoms of tinnitus by tuning the device so that you can hear well. If you are able to hear better, you will be less likely to notice the sounds resulting from tinnitus. Masking devices, these act like a hearing aid in that as they are worn near the ear, and they also act like a white noise machine because they continuously play a low level of white noise. In essence. A masking device is a mixture of a hearing aid and a white noise machine that works to decrease the effects of tinnitus. Tinnitus retraining, like a masking device, this device is worn in the ear. However, rather than white noise, the device plays tonal music that is made to suit the individual tones and frequencies of your tinnitus. The point is to get you accustomed to hearing the tinnitus noise so that you won't notice it when you are not wearing the device. The device is usually paired with counseling to complete the retraining. There is a medication that could possibly decrease the symptoms of the condition. These medications include tricyclic antidepressants, usually used on the treatment of severe tinnitus because of the bothersome side effects that they can cause. Alprazolam is another medication that can reduce tinnitus symptoms. However, the side effects and the possibility of it becoming habit forming need to be noted. A cause of tinnitus is high blood pressure, blood clots and other blood vessel conditions. Treating a blood vessel condition, whether using medication, 
surgery or other means, will treat the cause of tinnitus and, hopefully, end the symptoms of the condition. Be reminded that sometimes, even though the cause of tinnitus has been found and successfully treated, the symptoms associated with tinnitus may still remain. In such cases, you can talk with your medical practitioner about options to manage these symptoms. Another way to manage the symptoms of tinnitus is to avoid possible irritants. As an asthma sufferer, you quickly get to know the things that make your asthma worse such as dirt, dust and even heavy exercise. Like asthma, tinnitus sufferers will learn what irritates their symptoms and makes them harder to handle. Some irritants include loud noises, certain head positions and maybe even foods. In these cases, it is best to avoid these irritants so that you are able to manage your symptoms more effectively. Stress can make your tinnitus symptoms worse, and it can also make it harder for you to think clearly. Managing stress is an easy way to manage the symptoms of tinnitus. It allows patients to be more in tune with their bodies, and it helps them realize when to seek necessary help, if needed. There are many ways that to manage stress, and it is all reliant upon what is comfortable for each individual. My neighbor swears that yoga helps her to feel at one with her body and assists in removing the stress that she feels. I, on the other hand, feel uncomfortable with the different stances involved in yoga, so it becomes a source of stress for me, instead of a source of stress relief. The way that you choose to manage your stress should be something that you are comfortable with, be it by riding, running, reading, singing or even having a long bath. You may have to try different activities to find what suits you best. Hypnotherapy, another tinnitus treatment with high success rate is hypnosis. It is one of the best ways of reducing tinnitus volume, as well as, the stress, anxiety and depression that normally accompany tinnitus. Studies show that over the long term, a well-designed hypnotherapy program has a 69% success rate of reducing tinnitus noise. Usually you will need more than one session of hypnotherapy, it is a long-term solution, to be used possibly in conjunction with other therapies. The process of hypnosis puts a person into a state of heightened awareness and focused concentration known as, the alpha state. Recent studies have shown this state of mind to be superior for learning, memory recall and training the mind to overcome what most people consider to be their, bad programming from past experiences, including tinnitus. Under this type of treatment, a tinnitus sufferer can work towards reducing the tinnitus sound by reprogramming the mind on how it listens to the tinnitus. In internet you find several programs for hypnosis tinnitus therapy, for example a hypnotic tape developed by Dr. Jonathan Parker, a tinnitus sufferer himself. More info www.hernet.com or http colon slash slash bit dotly slash 16 it's 40. Actinitis reduction program by Kevin Hogan. More info www.kevinhogan.com or http colon slash slash bit dotly slash ones and bitched. Or you find a personal hypnotherapist who has experience of using hypnosis in conjunction with tinnitus, and this might not be your local hypnotherapist. Acupuncture is part of the traditional Chinese medicine, TCM, in Western medicine. Doctor looks for specific causes of diseases, and focuses on particular body components to treat. TCM doesn't work in this way. There are fundamental differences in principles diagnosis and treatment approaches between Western medicine and Chinese medicine. The Chinese diagnoses investigate which type of tinnitus is present, kidney, water, liver, wood, heart, fire, spleen earth, lung, metal. Therefore, each tinnitus sufferer will be pierced in individual acupuncture points. In addition, TCM offers nutritional advice, Chinese herbal medicine, relaxation with Tai Chi Qi Gong. And the Chinese medicine characterized tinnitus into ways, one that sounds like a low continuous tone and another that is more like a roaring, hissing sound that has been compared with that of cicadas make on a hot summer night. 
The latter often corresponds to a sudden onset and is more easily treatable with acupuncture and CM. The former type, that is with the low tones, is more chronic and therefore harder to treat. So it is difficult to say how effective acupuncture is in stopping tinnitus generally, because tinnitus comes from many different causes, but it can be very effective in the treatment of tinnitus. Counseling is something that people are, sometimes, skeptical about, especially if they have not tried it before. However, therapy can be an important part in learning how to deal with your tinnitus. Many people will put on a strong fade when dealing with their families and friends, not wanting to make them feel bad and not wanting to be treated differently. Having somebody with enough background on the topic with whom you can talk freely allows you to vent and avoid bottling up your feelings. More importantly, you will also have the benefit of having a medically trained professional offering you sound advice on how to cope with your situation. Surgery there is a story of a man in Britain who was on the verge of suicide because his ongoing suffering as a result of tinnitus. His doctors said that it was too dangerous to undergo surgery. His desperation left him researching all the available therapies, and to send his scans to another doctor in America for a second opinion. This doctor suggested ways to remove the symptoms of tinnitus through surgery. The British man presented these to his doctors who agreed to the treatment and performed the surgeries. As a result, the man was able to cure tinnitus through surgery. Surgery is not an option that is highly recommended to treat tinnitus. However, it has helped. This is not saying that surgery can cure all tinnitus conditions. Because of the variety of tinnitus's causes, you cannot slap a single treatment that cures any case. That is why it is stressed that the treatment should address the cause rather than the effects of tinnitus. Families and friends love you and will support you, but, sadly, they will never fully understand what you are going through. Support groups offer you the opportunity to share your experiences with others who are facing the same problems as you. Being part of a support group also allows you to learn from the experiences of others so that if you ever find yourself in the same situation you will know how to deal with it. Moreover, you know that you are not alone and that there are others who are just like you, facing the same challenges. Education is the key to almost everything. The more educated you are on the symptoms, effects, treatments and the effects of tinnitus on yourself and those around you, the more empowered you will be in the face of these challenges. Not only are you able to arm yourself with ways to deal with tinnitus, you can, now, educate your friends and family about this condition so that they are more understanding of what you are going through. This will enable them to support you more effectively. Tinnitus is not a disease, it is a condition, and as such can be treated successfully so that you can continue to life a happy and fulfilled life. Conclusion Thank you again for downloading this book. I hope this book was able to help you to overcome your tinnitus and stop the noises in your head. If you treat the underlying cause of tinnitus, the effects will disappear. As we mentioned earlier, sometimes we are unable to find a cause for tinnitus, and in these cases, you should consult with your doctor and find ways to manage tinnitus's symptoms, so you can live a happy healthy life. The more you know about tinnitus and its various methods of treatment, the easier it will be for you to develop ways to handle and treat your tinnitus. One in seven people around the world suffer from the effects of tinnitus, it not a rare condition. Because the causes vary so greatly from one patient to the other, there is no single cure for the condition. There are very successful treatments that can end the symptoms of tinnitus and there also are treatments that can help alleviate the symptoms. It's important to keep in mind that the severity of the symptoms differs greatly for each person, and that the effects of the condition also vary. With medical assistance and the support of your friends and family, the symptoms associated with tinnitus can be coped with and you can live as normal a life as the next person. Finally, if you enjoyed this book, then I'd like to ask you for a favor, would you be kind enough to leave a review for this book on Amazon? It'd be greatly appreciated. Thank you and good luck.